This block diagram illustrates the depth control of a submarine. The first question that we are trying to answer is the it's to find the transfer function between y and r. We see that there is a disturbance here, but if you're interested in the, the transfer function between the input and output, we can for now set the disturbance to zero. By doing that, we have two simple feedback loops to solve for. The first one is this one here, and the second one is the outer loop. Let's start with the inner feedback loop. The transfer function there becomes k1 over s, simply the multiplication of these two elements, divided by 1 plus the line function k1 over s times the feedback function k2. And this simplifies to k1 over s plus k1 k2. Again, find the common denominator here, that is s. s multiplies 1. Everything now is divided by s. The top and the bottom s will cancel. We can now rewrite the block diagram as r of s times k and now use the function that we just found. Here we have another feedback loop. And I'll directly find the relation between y of s and r of s by eliminating that feedback loop and multiplying everything by k, because k is in the line here. That becomes the line function k1 divided by 1 plus the line function again times the feedback function k. And this is all multiplied by k. Again, finding a common denominator here will allow us to cancel out these s plus k1, k2. And this will simplify to y of s over r of s equals to k1 over s plus k1, k2 plus k1, k, all multiplied by k. And this is now the transfer function. In the second part of this problem, we are interested in the steady state error to a step input of t of s when r is set to zero. This means that we want the output to go to zero, so we set r to zero, but there is a disturbance acting on the system. We want to see what is the effect of that disturbance in the output and how much it deviates from the ideal output, which is zero. If you set r to zero, we need to rearrange this block diagram and now find the transfer function between y and t. So let's do that. We start with t of s, which is the input now. t of s has that negative sign. 1 over s is the plant. The output doesn't change. And now we have to rearrange this feedback loop. They are both multiplied by, again, both of these feedbacks. One is k2, the other one is k. They are added together. And multiplied by k1. Both are multiplied by k1. And now the negative signs that we see here and here, I can transfer that to this sum, and that is the same. We see that this part of the block diagram can be simplified. The sum there takes y times k2 times k1 plus minus y times k times k1. So this feedback loop can be simplified. with one single function, that is k1 times k2 plus k. And this is what goes to the feedback. Now finding the transfer function is easy, y of s divided by t of s is one over s divided by 1 plus 
1 over s times k1, k2 plus k, uh, times 1 over s, so divided by s, and everything here multiplied by negative 1. See, this negative sign here needs to be taken into account. This now simplifies to negative 1 over s plus k1, k2 plus k. Now that we have the transfer function between the disturbance and the output, we can calculate the state error when the step input of t of s is applied to the system. The steady state error to an input disturbance is the desired output minus the actual output. Remember that we set r to 0. And now anything that this deviates from 0 is an error. The system is trying to control y of s such that it goes to 0. But there is a disturbance, and the disturbance will make y deviate from 0. So now our steady state error, or our error function, is simply 0 minus the actual position. The actual position is this times t of s. So negative, negative becomes positive. 1 over s plus k1, k plus k2. This is this part of the equation. If you multiply that by t of s, that gives us y of s. So this times t of s. t of s is a step input. So this is 1 over s. So again, this is r of s, 0. And this part is y of s. Why are we not doing here t of s minus y of s? That wouldn't make sense because there is no error with respect to a disturbance. Disturbance is something external to the system, and it doesn't make sense to compare the current state of the system to a disturbance. It does make sense to compare the current state with the desired state, and in this case, our desired state is zero. The steady state error is now the limit when s tends to zero of e of s, times s. So this s here will cancel that one out, and we are left with the limit when s tends to 0 of 1 over s plus k1 k plus k2, and this is equal to 1 over k1 k plus k2. The last part of this problem is to set k and k2 to 1, and find the, in, find the temporal response of y of t for a step input of r of s, and then select the value of k1 such that we have the fastest response. We know that the upper limit is 10. After 10, the system may get unstable. We know that a k1, for some hardware limitation, needs to be between 1 and 10. Replacing k and k2 with 1, we are left with k1 over s plus k1 plus k1 plus 2k1. The input now, r of s, is a step. So this multiplied by 1 over s gives y of s. Now here we need to find the inverse Laplace, and we have to split this into partial fractions. So we can have a over s plus 2k1 plus b over s. And y of t in this case will be a exponential of minus 2k1 plus b. If you solve for a and b, we'll get a is negative 1 half and b is positive 1 half. So y of t is 1 half of 1 minus the exponential of a negative 2 k1 t. What about t there? The question says select k1 for the fastest response. 
and k1 needs to be comprised between 1 and 10. If you plot the time response of this system as time and y of t, looking at this, we know that the final value is 1 half, regardless of k1. The system will converge to 1 half. The system is overdamped, it follows an exponential. Now, if k1 is, is very small, this exponential decays slow. So it's going to go up like that. If k1 increases, now this exponential decays faster and faster. So for a higher value of k1, the exponential will be sharper, which will provide the faster response compared to the previous one. So in order to maximize the response here, we can set k1 to the highest value. And according to the problem, the highest value is 10. And this is what we should select for the fastest response.